Hey there, my name's Devin, and I'm so glad to be with you here today. Now, I love to read books, but there's something I like better than books. And you know what that is? Tacos. So today, our book is called Dragons Love Tacos by Adam Rubin. Hey kid, did you know that dragons love tacos? They love beef tacos and chicken tacos. They love really big, gigantic tacos and tiny little baby tacos as well. Why do dragons love tacos? Maybe it's the smell from the sizzling pan. Maybe it's the crunch from the crispy tortillas. Maybe it's a secret. Either way, if you wanna make friends with dragons, tacos are key. Hey dragon, why do, you guys, why do you guys love tacos so much? But wait, as much as dragons love tacos, they hate spicy salsa even more. They hate spicy green salsa and spicy red salsa. They hate spicy chunky salsa and spicy smooth salsa. If the salsa is spicy at all, dragons can't stand it. Why do dragons hate spicy salsa? Well, just one drop of hot sauce makes a dragon's ears smoke. Just one single speck of hot pepper makes a dragon snort sparks. Spicy salsa gives dragons the tummy troubles. And when dragons get tummy troubles, Oh boy. If you want to make tacos for dragons, keep the toppings mild. Tomatoes, lettuce, cheese. These are all good toppings for tacos for dragons. Hey dragon, how do you feel about spicy taco toppings? Not good. Dragons love parties. They love costume parties and pool parties. They like big gigantic parties with accordions and tiny little parties with charades. Why do dragons love parties? Maybe it's the conversation. Maybe it's the dancing. Maybe it's the comforting sound of good friends and laughter. The only thing dragons love more than parties or tacos is taco parties. Taco parties are parties with lots of tacos. If you wanna have some dragons over for a taco party, you'll need buckets of tacos, pant loads of tacos. The best way to judge is to get a boat filled with tacos. That's about how many tacos dragons need for a taco party. After all, dragons love tacos. Hey dragon, are you excited for the big taco party? Just remember, dragons hate spicy salsa. Before you host your taco party with dragons, get rid of all the spicy salsa. In fact, bury the spicy salsa in the backyard so the dragons can't find it. These dragons love your taco party. They love the music, they love the decorations, they especially love the tacos. Congratulations. It's a good thing you got rid of all that spicy, <gasps> wait a second, what are those little green things in the salsa? You didn't read the fine print. Now with spicy jalapeno peppers, <gasps> Dragons, listen to me. Do not eat those tacos. Those little green specks in the salsa, those are jalapeno peppers. They are super spicy. I know you love tacos, dragons, but you are not gonna love these tacos. Do not let those dragons eat those tacos. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Too late. Oh no. Not good. Why would dragons help you rebuild your house? Maybe they're good Samaritans. Maybe they feel bad for wrecking it. Maybe they're just in it for the taco breaks. After all, dragons love tacos. The end. Hi, my name is Lisa Burnett. And this is my yoga studio and I am going to be sharing if you're afraid of the dark remember the night rainbow written and illustrated by Cooper Edens this is a very special book for me because I found it and fell in love with it 
while I was visiting my oldest brother in his house. And uh, that was a, a long, long time ago. And I've loved that book ever since then. So it's really special. I hope you like it too. If you're afraid of the dark, remember the night rainbow. If tomorrow morning the sky falls, have clouds for breakfast. If night falls, use stars for butterflies. Use stars for street lights. If the moon gets stuck in a tree, cover the hole in the sky with a strawberry. If you have butterflies in your stomach, ask them into your heart. If your heart catches in your throat, ask a bird how she sings. If the birds forget their songs, listen to a pebble instead. If you lose a memory, embroider a new one to take its place. Y-E-S, yes. If you lose the key, throw away the house. If the clock stops, use your own hands to tell time. If the light goes out, wear it around your neck and go dancing. If the bus doesn't come, catch a fast cloud. If it's the last dance, dance backwards. If you find your socks don't match, stand in a flower bed. If your shoes don't fit, give them to the fish in the pond. If your horse needs new shoes, let him use his wings. If the sun never shines again, hold fireflies in your hands to keep warm. And if you're afraid of the dark, remember the night rainbow. And if there's no happy ending, make one out of cookie dough. And that's the end. Hey there, it's me, Helen Parr, Mrs. Incredible, or Elastigirl. And I'm back with The Incredibles 2 from Disney Pixar. The Incredibles were a family of supers. When a machine started ripping up the city, they sprang into action. While Mr. Incredible and Elastigirl tried to stop it, their kids, Violet and Dash, grabbed Baby Jack-Jack. Their friend Frozone joined in the fight. The Incredibles stopped the machine, but got in big trouble. Supers were not allowed to use their powers. Mr. Incredible and Elastigirl had no choice but to return to their underground lives as Bob and Helen Parr, along with the kids. But then, a wealthy businessman named Winston Dever and his sister Evelyn proposed a plan to make supers legal again. Elastigirl would get the first assignment. She was nervous, but this was her chance to help her family and all supers. I love superheroes. 
Winston was so excited to work with the Lasta girl, he showed he allowed the whole family to stay in one of his mansions. Dash loved it. He used a remote control to move the floors and turn on the waterfalls. On Elastigirl's first day at her new job, she spotted a runaway train. She hopped onto her elasticycle and chased the train throughout the city. She scrambled over rooftops, zoomed up a crane, and zipped through a tunnel. And finally, she stretched into a parachute and slowed down the train right before it ran off the tracks. Back at home, Bob was exhausted. Helping with homework, changing diapers, and dealing with teenage drama really knocked him out. While Bob was napping, Jack-Jack watched TV. Then he heard a noise in the backyard. It was an intruder. Jack tried to stop the criminal. Zap! Hiss! Bob heard the commotion and ran outside. He couldn't believe his eyes. You have powers? The next day, the city buzzed with the news of Elastigirl's amazing re rescue. During her first TV interview, a supervillain called the Screen Slaver attacked. He took over an ambassador's helicopter. Elastigirl raced off and rescued the ambassador. Elastigirl still needed to catch the Screen Slaver. With Evelyn's help, she traced the villain's signal to his lair. She chased him through the building and captured him. But something didn't feel right. Elastigirl realized she'd caught the wrong person. Evelyn Dever was the real screen slaver. Evelyn wanted to destroy her brother's plan and make sure supers were never legal again. In a flash, Evelyn put hypno goggles on Elastigirl. She was under Evelyn's spell. Meanwhile, Bob needed some serious help with Jack-Jack. The baby's powers were uncontrollable. Bob brought him to the smartest person he knew, Edna Mode. Edna made a special super suit and tracker to help manage Jack-Jack's powers. Everything was finally calm at home. Then Evelyn called and said Elastigirl was in trouble. Bob asked Frozone to watch the kids and then rushed away. When Mr. Incredible arrived at the Devers' ship, a hypnotized Elastigirl pounced on him. She fought him until she could put hypno-goggles over his eyes. Meanwhile, a group of hypnotized supers arrived to capture the kids. Frozone showed up just in time to help. Dash clicked a remote and zoom! The amazing Incredibile pulled up. It whisked the kids away while Frozone was captured by the supers. The Incredibile brought the kids to the ship, but where was Jack-Jack? Dash and Violet were tracking their lost brother when a hypnotized super attacked. Violet flung razor-sharp force fields at the super until she and Dash could escape. Everyone on board was under Evelyn's wicked spell. She forced the supers to set the ship on a crash course towards the city. Suddenly, the kids appeared. They freed their parents and Frozone from the hypnosis. The family was ready to fight together. The Incredibles and Frozone battled the rest of the hypnotized supers. Before long, everyone was back to normal. Then Evelyn tried to escape. Elastigirl chased after her. Evelyn was a fierce opponent, but she was no match for Elastigirl. All the supers worked together to keep the ship from crashing into the city center. They turned the ship around stopping it just before it reached the shore. Everyone was grateful to the supers. The city changed the law, making it legal for them to use their powers again. Now the Incredibles were ready to face any challenge as a family. The End